Hello, my name is Sadie McLaughlin and my project is on this glass beaker. Today we're going to be talking about the ancient Syrian glass beaker pictured on the screen. This glass beaker derives from the Crusader period which lasted from 1095 AD to 1492 AD. But this artifact was actually created in 1260 AD. The beaker, like I stated, is made of glass with gilding and enamel. The decoration and motifs of this glass piece reflect the artistic and cultural diversity of the Mediterranean region. We're going to be talking about the physicalities of this piece as well as its relevance among other pieces and similarities they may share. Before we get into the artifact, I wanted to take some time to give some background on the Crusader period as it is relevant to both the history and context of the beaker. The Crusades were a series of religious wars primarily within 1097 and 1292 between the Muslims and Christians to gain control of Holy Land that were considered sacred to both groups. The motivating factor of the bloody battles was to access the sacred shrines that were associated with Jesus's life and ministry. Victories of the bloodshed and power over land in the Middle East propelled the status of the European Christians. With this information and the timeline it follows, we can see that the beaker was crafted approximately 30 years before the end of the Crusader campaign. Going back to the beaker, you can see the evidence of the gilding and enamel on its glass surface as an inscription and imagery covering the entire frontal face of the beaker. Gilding is the process of incorporating small additions of gold to the surface of a glass object and using a low fire to meld the two materials. Enameling is applying an opaque composition by fusion to the surface of metal, glass, or pottery, in this case, glass. A couple more examples of enameled and gilded glass from Islamic lands would be this mosque lamp and a bottle that both share similar qualities. They're also created within 100 years of another. You might have seen them in a book or other lecture videos. Reading into the inscription located above the scene, it can be translated from Arabic to Glory to our Lord the Sultan, the Royal, the Diligent the wise, the defender, the protector of frontiers, the fortified by God, the triumphant. Below the painted blue inscription is the very detailed imagery consisting of mostly green, blue, and brown pigments, some yellow. This Christian-themed narrative tells a story using figurative composition of saints, architectural elements, and foliage. The figures pictured inside of the second story two windows of the structure are the saints, while the structure itself most likely resembles monastic communities. Monastic communities are where members of the religion live strictly by the law and lifestyle set out for them by their religion and church. Here I have provided the glass beaker alongside with another object that it is directly related to. Although the artist is unknown of these objects, you could suggest that they may have been made by the same person or at the same time in order to be presented together or have relation to one another. As I already talked about the imagery on the beaker on the left, the beaker on the right shares a separate narrative. This beaker was made in the same year and shows very striking similarities in process. Also with its decorative compositions and detailing. Displayed on the surface of this object is an image of what is believed to be Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a gray donkey. The inscription on this beaker differs as it's praising an anonymous ruler translating to glory to our master and it goes on. Um, between the 12th and 14th century AD was the rise of the Golden Age in Islamic glassmaking, um, especially in Syria and Egypt. This is the time in which the decorative traditions of gilded and enameled glass became significantly popular among others. The Syrians and Egyptians adopted the Roman glass industry and enhanced it with their sharp techniques. 
the perfection of decorative elements and coloring expanded the variety of objects being produced at the time. As the glass industry drew, as the glass industry grew, the pieces were in high demand and being exported throughout Europe, China, and the Middle East. Um, the Golden Age lasted until the 14th century, but ended because of the disruption of Mongol invasions that took place from the 13th to 15th century. Here, I provided some examples of other historical pieces that resulted from the Golden Age, including another beaker, an ewer, and two bottles.